But this um, is still an exciting project. We have them all stacked over there uh, to do that. The round table, uh, the um, theme was uh, what impact has space technology had on art? And we did ask also, you know, well, what impact has art had on space technology? And the uh, conversation, the crisscross conversation made it very apparent that it is a crisscross situation that they both do feed from each other and, and uh, uh, derive a lot of uh, new thoughts, visions on both ways. And this research then led to the development of the shape of the space shuttle. But this is very real, a photo reel. And you can tell that this artist knew technically what was going on with the painting. But it's a it's wonderful painting, isn't it? She took many different things that she has seen inside the vehicle assembly building and put it together um, in this wonderful non-real form, but capturing the essence of what that interior space is like. Again, we have another, this artist is Stan Stokes. He did the lifting body. You can see how intimately familiar he is with the mechanics of what's going on. This is X-29. The wings are swept forward instead of back. This is the sky, it looks like. If you look closely, though, that's actually the Earth in back of the astronaut, here's the, you see the man's face, and you see then what he's looking at. This is the big, uh, this is titled Sunrise Suit Up. They show the artist suiting up. Yeah. And uh, uh, one thing to remember is that the Kennedy Space Center is in the center of the Merritt Island Logy. And you, and you think, you know, isn't it, I mean, it, it's a beautiful piece of technology. One thing you have to remember that these are not like Fords that come off the production line. Further, why don't we just kind of move down a little bit? I know. I, I think that the whole aspect of um, science and technology and, and art is um, a fascinating subject, and many people have talked about it, so that was brought up.
Well, I'm a classroom teacher, and I've been working in this gallery on the other side of the exhibit. The first side, of course, is for the public, and here we have thousands of visitors coming through. But what you don't see right at first is that this gallery is really designed for a classroom teacher. We have in place lesson plans, pre and post activities for the teacher to work with before they come to our gallery. Typically, they will bring 30 students. Those 30 students will have particular assignments. We'll send some to our orbit orbiting vehicle uh, and some to mission control. These students have been working on vocabulary development and also communication skills. But each student will then receive instructions along with the teacher for other ways to interact in the gallery. We've had uh, kind of a, a unique experience because every student comes away with a different set of goals and different set of objectives that they've received from this. So we've used this not only as a teaching tool for the teacher, but also for the students. This is Chris Schell of the Aerospace Research Application Center here in Indianapolis. And Chris, could you please tell us about some of your involvement with this exhibit? Okay. Um, I've been involved with assisting Rick Croslin in obtaining samples of spin-off technologies that have been developed over the past few years for use here in the exhibit. Um, I've also assisted some of the museum staff with obtaining technical contacts when they had questions about different types of things. And I also have um, volunteered uh, over 20 hours of time here in the exhibit. Well, thank you. That's considerable. Thank you very much. This is Mr. David Hoppe, Senior Programs Officer of the Indiana Humanities Council. David, could you tell us, please, about the activities of the Council and how NASA came to be involved in the Humanities Conference, please? Well, generally speaking, the Council is involved in uh, producing cultural programs or funding cultural programs for the people of the state of Indiana. In the case of our annual conference, this is an occasion for us to bring together humanists artists, scientists, and business and civic leaders to discuss issues and topics that are important to the citizens of Indiana. Uh, a number of the issues were, uh, one theme, for example, was uh, cultural literacy. Uh, what would constitute an educated person, let's say, in the year 2050? We were also discussing the future of beauty. Uh, we were discussing technologies and human evolution. Uh, also, the citizen and the future state. Uh, the changing roles of uh, family relationships. Um, these are some of the broad topics that we brought panels together to explore uh, in front of a public audience. Uh, also, Orson Scott Card, the Hugo and Nebula award-winning science fiction novelist, was here to address the conference uh, as our keynote speaker. We are with Dr. Glenn Bingle, Director of Medical Education Programs at Community Hospitals in Indianapolis. That was uh, one of the exciting things that uh, many of the physicians have commented that they did learn uh, about a lot of the things that NASA has developed that they are actually using today in their everyday clinical practice of taking care of patients. I don't think they had appreciated the origin of this scientific uh, uh, technology until they were here that night and actually could see uh, the moon landing and see the analogies and all the various things that have come back and have helped them in their everyday practice. This has been a delightful opportunity for us. Our role for NASA as a contractor is to look at how do we take NASA's technology, federal government technology, and apply it to industrial problems, and in particular, apply it against non-aerospace uh, problems. Most of our activity, therefore, is dealing with, with business people. Uh, we've had on and off discussions saying that business people have children, and that one way that one might impact business people to think more not only about NASA technology but technology in general would be through their children. We were delighted that Lewis chose to replicate the, uh, the most current uh, exhibit that has been produced for the technology transfer uh, area or the tech utilization area in NASA. Uh, we recognize that it maybe still reaches a little a more senior level audience than the, than the audience that it was targeted here for, but that at least that it was the best part. Our role then was to say, how could we take some of those, those technologies that were demonstrated there, a dust buster or a thermal covering, and, and put it in a mode that a child could understand and make something out of it. And so through a teacher in residence here, Rick Crossland, who has worked for us as a consultant starting last summer and hopefully will be with us this continuing spring, 
uh, he put together uh, an idea of how we could use some of these technologies in an experimental way. So you take the blanket and you wrap yourself up and you see if you get warmer or, or things like that. So our role, and, and I think you've spoken to Chris Shell uh, previously, was to go out, talk to the company, say, would you provide materials, sunglasses, dustbusters, whatever, so that we can use it in this display. And then to sort of uh, work behind the scenes in our contacts with, with Rick as he looked for finding bits and pieces of, of gear. Um, one of the pieces of hardware in the scientific area was, was something of ours. So in one part level was then producing uh, materials that could be used and interacting in a way that, that might be helpful to make them. Uh, the other part that, that was a delight for, for us and our staff was the ability to provide, quote, experts. And so throughout the two-month period, uh, every Friday, our staff is over manning uh, a separate uh, two-hour slot. And then they volunteer and have worked weekends, and some have, have worked the overnight mission. So they also then have an opportunity to function in that role. So that's been sort of the play, and then we've gotten to do special things as uh, uh, a career night program where we helped uh, in terms of working through that and then most recently uh, the proclamation of, of the, what December 6th uh, St. Nicholas Day as everyone knows as Technology Transfer Day here. Yes and I understand that uh, during Technology Transfer Day there were researchers and engineers from the NASA Lewis Research Center and you had uh, organized a reception for them by some of the local community of research engineers in the corporations of Indianapolis. Could you tell us more about that, please? As far as we know, uh, this may be the first time that a, a program of this nature actually happened. It's, it's uh, quite common for NASA to have an exchange where its people go uh, to visit a company or, or vice versa, but uh, probably there's, to say it's the first may be stretching it, but uh, we'll say it was the first time ever. Uh, where what we did was look at bringing a whole group of people into town and then finding hosts for them. And, and what we looked uh, for was sort of an informal, uh, roll up your sleeves kind of, of, of atmosphere. Uh, an expert uh, such as uh, Walter Merrill who went out to uh, Allison Gas Turbine. Uh, it turns out Walter had been uh, interacted with the folks out there, but they were delighted again to have that opportunity. Sit down with a dozen or so engineers, have a sandwich, and a brief formal presentation. This is where we are, this is where we're going, this is what NASA's problems are. But then to move into, what's your problems, where can I help you? And, and that's what we would call the purest form of technology transfer. What, what our feedback was from the companies who had them, they were delighted and are already asking, when are we going to do it again? Could it happen again? How often could it happen? There were companies who wanted to participate, but because of other conflicts, did not. Uh, you probably have a little better opportunity interacting with the NASA folks on the way back, but th th my brief ones at least indicated that they found it interesting in a little different sense. They usually go to professional meetings and meet their colleagues or they go on assignment to a company. Uh, but here was a case of it was just sort of wide open, throw it out and see. And so we think it was a very successful uh, prototype. And, and we're going to present it back to, to our funding source in Code C and suggest that something like this be considered in the future. I think it was, it was very successful.